Welcome back. I am the working class musician, Jimmy Franklin. Have you ever been enticed by one of these Japanese knockoff brands that claim that they make better Les Pauls than, you know, Gibson does? You ever seen one of those? I know I have, and uh, here's my story on it. Here's how I feel about them. So, a brief history of uh, Japanese knockoff anything. The Japanese have been really amazing at creating knockoffs throughout history, really. They've copied everything and they've always seemed to do it better. You know, there was a Japanese company that made whiskey. They waited 20 years after researching American whiskey before they released their own bottle. Motorcycles. Harley Davidson taught the Japanese how to make motorcycles after World War II. They didn't publicize this relationship, but ever since, Japan has constantly been making better motorcycles. Even back to the third century, Japan had no written language. So they copied Chinese characters and used them in their own language. I was selling a Japanese made Yamaha motorcycle and someone contacted me saying that they could only pay me a certain amount, you know, the typical kind of haggling. I was asking $6,000 for this motorcycle. He said he could only do 4,500. I told him if he could get another $500 together that I would give him the bike for five grand. And his response was, okay, but I have to sell one of my guitars first. To which I responded, wait, what kind of guitar do you have? This guy shows up with gold top and I've always wanted a gold top in my guitar arsenal. Everyone should want a gold top, period. They're one of the classiest looking guitars in history. He tells me all about what it is, but I did my research and the thing checks out. Seems like people are pretty adamant online about these things being great. I said, I wanna check out the guitar. He brings it over, he checks out the motorcycle. As he pulls the guitar out of the case, I thought to myself, this idiot brought the wrong guitar. That's how nice this guitar looked right out of the gate. Here's the instrument that I received. Oh, look at this. Oh my God. This is my Tokai Love Rock, AKA uh, Gibson Les Paul. But who said that? Not me, I didn't say that. <laughs> Since I picked this thing up, the second, I didn't even plug it in. I held it and I told him that it was a deal. I, I knew at, in that moment that this guitar was worth it. He gave me the money plus the guitar. I gave him the bike and we went our separate ways. I want him to know, hey Evan, if you are watching this, just know I still love it and I hope you're enjoying the bike. It's just gorgeous. I just love the way the light reflects off the gold top. It feels like a Les Paul. It doesn't just feel like a Les Paul, like playing wise, it feels like a Les Paul here. Before I get into the specs, I want to show you this. Here is one of my Les Paul standards. Gibson Les Paul standard. Check this out. Look at the wood grain on the back of both guitars. It's flawless. Everything about it is perfect. This Les Paul, I'm sorry, the Love Rock, out Les Pauls, this Les Paul. This thing is unreal. Let me tell you a couple of specs about it, things that I love and things that I eh, could live without in some ways. It's got everything a classic gold top would have. It's got the same pickguard. Everything's accurate down to the color of the 
Pickup selector, pearl inlays, the tuners are accurate. It even says Love Rock in the Les Paul writing. Check this out. It's even got the little position markers on the side of the knobs. Now this guitar does not come with a mini humbucker in the bridge and it especially does not come with a Bigsby. He Neil Younged it out. This P90 is massive, massive sounding. It sounds so good. But it hums like a bitch. This pickup is the only reason that I have a noise gate in my uh, signal chain. It's the only reason is this pickup. No other guitar. The mini humbucker, it's good. It sounds great. The only thing that I don't like is that it completely ruins the middle setting. These pickups don't jive together. Most of the time, I'm being aggressive enough on stage that I'm either up or I'm down. I actually have to take my time to go there, but when I do take my time to go to the middle setting, it's usually for a good reason. It sounds really shrill in the middle and it just doesn't have that kind of warm in-between sound that it would if it still had that other, the other P90 in it. I haven't disliked this enough to change it. I love Bigs Bees. I love them. I love Bigsby's. They are the classiest looking thing you could put on a Les Paul. <laughs> What's the downside? It should have roller saddles. You want to cut down that friction as much as possible. I will sometimes not use it just because I know it'll knock out of tune. But I can get away with it. The other factors that are sweet about having a Bigsby is the increased sustain. It already is a sustaining monster. You know, the sustain. You can go out for a bite and you just come back and <laughs> oh, it's wonderful! You can play this thing out and no one has any idea that it's not a Gibson Les Paul. It sounds like a Gibson. Like, it's not just that I'm out playing it, trying to fool people. If it didn't sound the part, I wouldn't use it. The thing's heavy, feels very close to the weight of my custom, which is 12 pounds. I don't care. This thing is more Les Paul than a Les Paul. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Let me know in the comments below what you wanna hear me cover on this guitar uh, to prove to you that it sounds and feels like a real Les Paul.